Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the channel. It is yours truly, Crystal Leandra. Sorry, uh, we went live for like 10 seconds and then we came back in uh, having some technical difficulties. I'm trying to get the audio set up correctly where the intro song doesn't play through my micro microphone because I know that it can sound muffled, especially on the podcast. So just know that I'm doing everything I can to try to get it fixed. I thought I had it fixed today. Canceled the stream, didn't have it fixed, tried it again, still didn't have it fixed. So we're just going to go with the flow. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and chat what we're going to talk about today. Um, what's my name? Like, I've been gone for two months. <laughs> I literally don't know who I am. I just got back to my body today. I've been gone for about 60 days. It's really nice to be back on Earth. Um, where have I been? I've been editing my book. Um it finally came out today. My book finally released today on Amazon, which is really exciting. I have a bunch of you guys have already talked, like the whole like Facebook chat um, group that we have and stuff. Everyone's been saying they they already got the book. Um, so there's on available on ebook. People are getting it on ebook and they're purchasing a um, a physical copy. The physical copy means so much to me just because like it's tangible evidence of like the hard work I did. So I would I love that you guys love the ebook, but I would really love if you got the um, hard copy because it just means so much to me um, after all the work that I put in. Uh, it was a lot of work. I did decide to self publish it. So I didn't go through a publisher. Um, I did this for a lot of reasons. One, it's expensive. They actually end up giving you kind of pennies on the dollar type of thing for all the work that you put in. I understand though why a publishing company um, charges so much money for um, for like you know editing your book and, and producing it because it took me like two months to literally get it prepared for release and. Uh, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears went into it, especially me doing it by myself. If any of you guys do buy it, I, I love you guys if you buy it. Um, I'd love it if you could review my book on Amazon. I'm not asking you to just give me a five-star review, although I would love that. Um, after you read it, if you would review it, I need at least 50 reviews for the the book to be like easily searchable for other people that don't find it so if you do buy the book please leave a review i would appreciate you like to the moon and back um some people are literally half halfway through the book so what most people seem to be doing is they've already got the ebook they're reading the ebook and then, and then they ordered the like actual physical book because it's going to take a few days to get there from amazon um and that means like so much to me so a lot of people are already like halfway through um the ebook and um, somebody tweeted at me last night about how sad one of the chapters is. I, I talk about my, my soulmate dog in one of the chapters and I really just wanted to make sure that I got across how important he was to me. Um, I really wanted you guys to understand that he was more than just like a dog, more than just an animal. So although that chapter is probably the saddest chapter in the book, it's, it's the most meaningful um, chapter. Kat and I are going to be doing a sort. She's going to interview me um, in a couple of weeks, two or three weeks from now. I'm basically waiting for everybody to get their book in the mail and, uh, you know, hopefully you'll be able to read through it by two or three weeks from now. And then Kat is going to set up a Q&A session. She's going to come up with some questions 
and she's going to interview me about the book. So if you guys have any questions, you should just at her, you know, on like Facebook or Twitter or whatever, and uh, she'll probably take your questions. Um, my book is a lot of ups and downs in my life. Um, it does end on a happy note, ends on a very like positive note. I also tell some really hilarious, funny stories about random people that I dated in the, one of the last chapters. So it's a, it will end up as a feel good. I wanted to make sure that when the book closed, you felt good, you know, like, so you'll see like the trials and tribulations I've had in my life, but it, it does come to a really positive, beautiful ending in my opinion. Um, and it's just really exciting that it's finally out there and like, it's a thing. So I can't wait to get my own copies in my hand for now though. I'm going to bring in my, uh, sidekick cat. What are you doing? Sidekick cat. Hi, being a Kit Kat, you know? Kit Kat, how's the, the northeastern uh, cold, freezing snowstorms? Uh, cold and freezing. Right. <laughs> Very cold and freezing. We had some snow this morning, um, but it's been super cold, super cold. I mean, single digits, but with the wind chill, it makes it like negative. It's like negative two or negative three. It's what it feels like. So I'm, I'm like whining in Vegas here. We've gotten snow in Vegas and... We usually don't get, uh, can you just make sure we're running on Facebook just as like a quickie, just make sure that we're up yeah. and running just cause I was having, I was like, it, it's a retrograde man. You know, like when that happens, like there's just weird stuff when the retrogrades around technology, technology stuff. Um, but yeah, it was, it snowed in Vegas for a few days and, um, it was really <laughs> strange. Like Vegas gets snow sometimes. So people get shocked by that and it's like, no, it happens, but it was like stuck and it was around the valley so that was kind of weird that was really we're weird. good on, on facebook we're good Just awesome so. okay mm -hmm. so um yeah I, I shouldn't complain about the snow here cat is hopefully going to be making a trip out here though in the next like two to four weeks ish right is that our plan of action here you know two is two is good that's safe she has a safe mark she I'm has ready. knitted herself a hazmat suit and she's ready to get on a plane and go and when Literally. she gets to my house, I'm going to spray her down with Lysol disinfectant, <laughs> and then she's going to jump in the shower. We're going to yep. burn her clothes. Yep. And then there's no corona. You know what I mean? Like, we're yeah, good to go. We're just not going to worry about it. <laughs> Literally. It's a good time, all right? It's been <coughs> over a year now since I've been in Vegas. Mm -hmm. um, that's long enough. That's yeah, long she's enough not – I mean, I'm sure we'll stream while she's here, but we're, this is going to be – I mean, usually we have work trips only, but this time I think we're just going to yeah. kind of have a fun trip because – COVID has been fun, you know what I mean? So we're planning on maybe making a trip day or two into Utah, a trip a day or two into Arizona, a trip day or two into Cali, and um, except Cali, we have to be careful because like they have like one in five people are sick right now. So like if anyone me. gets near me, I'm going to spray them with Lysol, like straight up. <laughs> It's like Don't. a pepper spray can, but Lysol. Pull it out. <laughs> Our numbers in Vegas aren't too bad, thank God. But we still have people coming in here from, uh, like, the hospitals are overwhelmed in California and in Arizona. And so we have people driving into Vegas to, because they have, you know, the pandemic issue going on. And... All of us local vegans like, please don't. Like, please don't come in here. Please. Like, our numbers are, like, on the lower side. Just please don't. Just stay where you're at. We don't need you here, okay? Don't move. So our <laughs> hospitals are pretty much overwhelmed. Oh, that's another thing I guess I should chat real quick. My mom is in the hospital. I know mm. I tweeted that. Sorry to panic, everybody. Um, you know, she had a triple bypass, guys, and her, her health is fragile. And she's older, and her health is fragile. That's really all I can say. And so she's okay. It's, um, she, she basically has like a blood infection and, um, she's just on some strong antibiotics being under doctor watch. She's not in the COVID ward, thank God. And, um, she's going to get out hopefully sometime next week. But that was also why my book was a little bit late being released because I just, I didn't want to have the attachment idea of like my mom going in on the same day my book was released. Like that's just sad memory. Let's not do that. You know what I mean? So she's good. But today, Kat and I have some, some tea to spill like normal. Like, you know when Kat's on here, it's going to be a funny, ridiculous <laughs> stream. It's going to get real. It's going to get real because there's zero filter and it's, it's a gift and a curse at the same time. Why am so. I laughing? It's the trauma. <laughs> um, it really is the trauma. It's mm -hmm. fine. So we're going to go over a few things today, which is going to be like a really fun chat. We're going to talk mm -hmm. about Richard Ramirez and the documentary on Netflix. 
We're going to talk yep. about Lupercalia because it is my second favorite holiday other than like my birthday. So it's Halloween and Lupercalia are like my absolute favorite. Is that, do you, are you the same? Yep. Is that like <laughs> a gothic it, thing? Like I feel like it, that's a witchy gothic thing. It messed up, but it's fine. All of my <laughs> friends are like, oh, I love Halloween. And second, Lupercalia. Like, like, let's. <laughs> Oh, I know, kidding. like, it's horrible. Because, I mean, the yeah. actual origins of Lupercalia in Rome, I know we've talked about it before, but it's such a fun topic to talk about. It, it, it never gets old, you know? Like, it's so much fun. I made a Lupercalia t-shirt, too. If you guys haven't found the um, Ghost Girl Diaries, um, I, I made a bunch of merch. It's on my website. I'm still working on my website. I need to tweak some stuff. But go to ghostgirlglam.com, and there's even Ghost Girl Diaries hoodies. There's Ghost Girl. I ordered a hoodie for myself, by the way. So I'm going yeah. through a manufacturing company that prints on demand, and they ship it for me. But it's on my website. So the minute that it like gets done printing, they ship it out to you. A bunch of people have bought a bunch of stuff already. Um, and I made a Lupercalia T-shirt. I made a couple of other cute ones. So just FYI, those are up there. Oh, and if you're wanting to search my book, go to Amazon, search Ghost Girl Diaries, and it should pop right up right there. Um, Let me put that in the chat, too. I'll look it up while you're talking. Uh, Richard Ramirez, Lupercalia. Oh, and what is it, After Death series? Is that what it's called? So, uh, uh, I wrote it down. Actually. Surviving, Surviving death? death? Surviving Death. Surviving Death. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about that today, too. Yeah, there's no <clears throat> tea with that. Hey, we're just, it's been a long day, you know? That's going to be the best part, okay? You gotta Can we stick save around the best to for the, last. Yeah, that has to wait because that's gonna get obnoxious. Like, yeah. Now we're gonna so. rush through Richard Ramirez and Lubricalia just to get to like, the tea part. <laughs> <laughs> you okay. know us too well, Crystal. I know it's too so bad. Well. All right, okay. I'm copy and pasting the Amazon link now for the paperback. So Richard and Ramirez, you can select oh, what? Kindle too. Oh yeah, there's like, yeah, there's Kindle too. Well, that's what everybody's doing, which I like. I love that everyone's supporting the ebook and the paper book. Like it means it means so much to me. Like I'm 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 probably gonna film it on Instagram when it comes in the mail, and I'm probably gonna scream when I'm like holding my own book because like you can ask Cat. Like she was there for the whole thing as creating it. Like there were days I was like, I just want to die. Like <laughs> it's so bad. It's so much. You worked so hard on this. It's yeah. I was, incredible to see it. I was literally up working till like 3 or 4 in the morning every night to try to edit it. And then, like, you send it to your friends and then they, they read it and then you have to edit it again. And, like, honestly, I've probably read my book like 200 times. I could probably recite it without even looking at it. And then somebody on my Instagram today was like, are you going to be releasing an audible version? And I'm like, oh, I feel like I'm having a seizure. <laughs> Hire somebody else to do it. Like probably. Season, like, yeah, I would like probably. I, yeah, I don't know if I could. I don't. I honestly don't know if I can read my book again at this point. Like, I just need some space. I love it. You know, I'm excited, but it's just like hey, I need some space. Um, so no, funny. Uh, Redemption said, "Congrats, thank you so much." So okay, Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker um, series. I'm just gonna just word vomit really quickly. All right, do it. I have done, like, a ton of research on Richard Ramirez, and I did not know he was a pedophile and he, like, molested children. Yeah, it was yucky. I did yucky. not know that. I had no idea. How did? How is that not in, like, part of the history of, like, learning about, like, him as a serial killer? How do we not know that? Yeah, it's, like, skipped over. Well, and, and they even explain in the series that it's skipped over because you have atypical signs of serial killers murderers whether it's like they always have like a niche right like if it's like young college women with like ted bundy or like even richard ramirez did you notice it was always like people of color or like asian people specifically mm -hmm. that was like his thing it wasn't like blonde white women it was always like people of color um, so there's always, like, a niche, but those niches don't usually cross over because whatever, like, childhood damage or trauma that they have done, which has caused them to be a predator, um, oh, sorry, I saw something, um, I thought I saw an orb, but it wasn't, don't worry, it's fine, we're safe, <laughs> I was like, don't you come in here, Richard, okay, I don't need you in here. Get your um, icky hands out of here. But usually mm -hmm. they don't cross over. So if somebody is a pedophile and a child abductor and um, molesting children, the likelihood of them also breaking into people's houses and, like, causing rapes like he did with the women or murdering men 
is like zero like that doesn't happen they don't cross over so as the crimes were taking place with the night stalker which he was like breaking into these homes at night doing creepy stuff with these people he would always rape the wife or the woman and then murder the man but always left the wife to be alive so that's interesting like that trauma definitely clearly happened in his path at some point yeah but in the same time they're having these like multiple crimes of children being molested and he's doing the same sort of thing where he's night stalking like that was where his name came from he's going in through windows the way he was connected to all of these crimes is he's wearing the same shoe and he leaves the same shoe print behind at every crime whether that's like in mud or in a, fl- a flower garden or even just like in cement in the snow whatever you know whatever it's always there and he's breaking into these homes he's abducting these children through the window walking out the front door with the kids like under eight years old so like between four and eight years old and he takes them back to his apartment and he transport them via duffel bag while they're alive isn't that horrible and then he rapes the kids and then when he's done with them he literally goes to a gas station says go into the gas station, tell them what happened, and tell them to call 911 and call your parents. And he just drives off, and I'm like, wow. The, the trauma with that must be just, like, out of this world. So they out had the, the woman, though. Did you hear her interview? She was one of the children that he abducted and, and molested. Mm-hmm. And I, I, yeah. I, I, like, was so sick for her. Like, I couldn't believe she's alive and like lived through you know what i mean like that is like that's that definition of not becoming your trauma of like overcoming your trauma because she literally like because of the fame behind richard ramirez as the quote night stalker she could have easily slumped into this like depression her whole life of being i'm the victim of the night stalker Mm -hmm. instead she took Mm -hmm. her power back man and she like does not let that identify her yeah yeah she turned her life around completely and refused to allow that situation that happened to her take control and of course i'm sure that doesn't come without moments of you know reminiscing on what the heck that what happened um but yeah she was an incredibly strong soul to watch her well her voice shook like you could tell she had emotion behind it you know of course of course but she was still such a strong person to be able to live a somewhat normal life Mm -hmm. beyond what happened to her right i was shocked so yeah like i was they had her like if you guys haven't seen they had her sitting in the chair she's getting ready to talk about it and honestly i was like oh this is one of the women like he raped and like left her but like before she opens her mouth you're looking at her like she's awfully young you know what i mean to like because richard would be older now if he would have lived you know and then suddenly she's like, yeah, I was one of the children he abducted. And I'm like, oh, my God. So like, crazy. like the, the trauma of having, like, he's not just a normal, like, molester, child molester. You know what I mean? Like, or even murderer. He had so much fame behind, like, he is a famous serial killer. Like, true crime people, like, are obsessed with him and, like, the things he did. And people survey and study, you know, the crimes he did to try to like catch other predators and it's to be molested or, or hurt by somebody of such stature she could have easily fallen in that trauma bonding lane of being like i'm gonna become an alcoholic i'm gonna become a drug addict my life is over my life is ending you know like i always have this like evil devil on my shoulder and although she was emotional she didn't seem that way to me at all did she to you not in the slightest like not she's a strong slightest. bitch like straight mm-hmm. up straight up yep that's it and that's that's what i meant like she's just sat there and spoke her truth and spoke about what happened and changed her life completely changed her life completely but even to get and, invited from the producers to be there to do this interview she could have said no yeah she was she's strong she's very strong damn person. mm-hmm I mean, that is a lesson for everybody because, and I I repeat this in my book too, is like, it is normal to go through trauma. It is normal to have a hard life. It is normal to have ups and downs. Society teaches us to be ashamed of having difficult times in our life. 
And and some of us, obviously, I've never, thank God, I've never had a, you know, a molest- molestation take place, thank God. But, like, it shows you, like, sometimes your path isn't that difficult. You know what I mean? Like, other people have had harder paths, and they've come out on the other side. Like, that is an old soul. That's, like, some strong old soul shit right there. Yeah. Because she did true. not let it define her. So it was amazing. Go ahead. You want to you take over for a second? She's um she's just an inspiration, mm-hmm. honestly, you know, for, for other women that might have been through some other, you know, traumatic means. Mm-hmm. And um, it's just really empowering to see, you know, uh, a woman standing so tall and proud of the life that she's built based off of, you know, what her younger years were like when she had that incident happen with mm-hmm. Richard Ramirez. And... Mm-hmm. Um, it just just goes to show you what what a perspective can do, what a mm-hmm. healthy perspective can do in the midst of chaos mm-hmm. to transform your life. And it's not easy. And that's not to discredit people that have been through things and are struggling and, and don't have the things that she had. But it, it's it's such a, a beautiful like light at the end of the tunnel view. Well, it is. It's like of, I can make it too. Then, like if she can do this, like I can do. Like I don't know what can be worse than surviving molestation sexual abuse as a child you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and she's and go ahead yeah and the messed up part of him telling her to go and call 911 right like that psychological trauma with my mind Uh so that is what would mess the worst of people up literally like i mean you have to be messed up to have to do that to say commit the act Put, put them in a body bag live, commit the act, and then tell them, call 911. Right. Because in a young person's mind, that's what you would do. Mm-hmm. You would already call 911, but it, oh, it was just messed up. Real gross. It Real was gross. so bad. Did they say mm-hmm. how many children were involved? It was like five or something? Yeah, it was something like that. It was something like that. Majority of them were boys. Hmm. So, see, that tells me he was molested probably as a child. Yeah. And then he started to reenact the acts. And that's why he let them go, because he was let go, right? Yeah. He, it's, it's that thing that you study with, like, psychology of when you're no longer in control. So when he was a child bl- being molested, he was not in control. And now right. he turns around, becomes the predator, and now he feels empowered because he's now in control. Right. It's messed up. And he starts reenacting the same things. But he's like, well... I won't kill him because I remember being a kid and being scared too, but I'm just going to let him go. Oh my gosh. See, now, okay, I love, you know, serial killers. Obviously, it's part of paranormal. And I've talked about this with Kat as I do think some serial killers may have mental health issues. I definitely think bipolar could come into play with manic episodes. But with Richard Ramirez, I think he was just a bad egg. I think those just exist. I think he's just a bad seed. He's just a bad egg. And, I mean, clearly it was brought on from the trauma of his childhood. But, like, he did violent acts, like, stomping people to death. Like, who... Once again, like, when, I, when I'm when i reading about serial killers or, like, watching true crime documentaries, I put myself in the shoes of the murderer and I'm like, the violence, the energy that it takes to be able to stomp someone to death, even the energy that it takes to break in a house at night pick up a child, carry him out quietly through the front door. To me, like, that had to have been an adrenaline rush for him. You know what I mean? Like, ooh, I did it. Look, I did it again. I'm always doing it. I'm always in control. I'm doing it again. Nobody knows. And I think he probably thought, too, that he was going to get away with it. He did. Because he wasn't going to murder the kids. Mm -hmm. He was going to tell the kid to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, call 911. But that's the messed up psychology behind it. Mm -hmm. And he, I told Crystal about this, too, when we were talking about, um, the, the series that we watched, um, The Night Stalker. And I had never seen darker eyes on a serial killer. Mm-hmm. Like, evil. Oh, yes, but... Okay, I like that you were... Because I'm going to play devil's advocate. But a lot of people are like, oh, he was into Satanism, and he, like, summoned demons, and, like, he was satanic, and he was, he was possessed by the devil or a demon while he was creating these acts. Bullshit. I'm sorry. Mm-mm. Let's not well, give Satan that much credit or demons for that matter. No, and I think that that wasn't a thing that he was actually doing. Um, that came way later. Scare like, tactics. In, in the killings. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and this is just like to go off subject for a minute. This also goes to show you what the media does with certain symbols in the craft. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because I'm sorry, a, a pentacle 
is not Satanist. Right. Now, if, if the pentacle was reversed right. or upside down, that is the sa- that's the Satanist, you know, pentacle situation going on here. Mm-hmm. But he never, like, even, and I mean, not to excuse it, but even when he wrote it on the wall or on his hand, mm-hmm. it was never in reverse. He, he didn't do his research. It's right. kind of like what I'm trying to say here, mm-hmm. which goes to show you that it's not, it, he might have not necessarily, like, followed that. But yeah, but in the 70s the or 80s when this is taking place, the internet's not going to exist. Oh, of course. And, of, and course. of course, the media is going to take a symbol and, like, run with it. And, like, oh, it's witchcraft. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's Satanism. Oh, it's, it's Satanism. demons. Oh, it's blow. And right. you're just like. Yeah. Messed up. We don't know what's going on here, you guys. Like, you're just no. creating fear. And honestly, that may have been what created fear at that time or created more fear um, with witchcraft, with witch, with paranormal, with anything of occult. Mm-hmm. Because Richard Ramirez was now tied to it. But he's he was typical of every serial killer. And they even talk about that in the documentary, which is when he found out his name was the Night Stalker, he liked that. And mm-hmm. he even admitted to police he liked his name. Mm-hmm. And now he's created this image, and that's why he kept continuing, you know, these horrible crimes over and over again, all up and down the state of California. And it was because he was proud of the image that he was creating. He was a night stalker. He was there to scare people. He was there to make you afraid. And he was there to take control of your life and possibly kill you. And on top of that, now he's like, okay, well, I'm in jail. And now I want to create a a darker image because the media is all eyes on me. He loved the media being there. Like, you can see him waving at cameras. And yes, his smile is sinister, but he's still nonetheless smiling. He liked the attention. Yeah. And with that being mm-hmm. said, of course he's going to start saying, oh, I'm a Satanist. Look, do you see the pentagram on my hand? And you're just sitting there like. Really? Yeah. And like, and the women that he also enamored that would come to his trials and things like that mm-hmm. and like flirt with him because they liked the bad guy. Well, up. Ted Bundy did the same thing. He got that girl pregnant that, who just passed oh. away. I know. Mm. Of course, I do What's think that? Ted Bundy had, I do think Ted Bundy is an example of possible manic episodes because he said he didn't remember when it happened Mm. and he said so that's another story but um richard ramirez i just think he's you know in in the case of this and like if you read my book this is going to be in there i don't want to give too much away obviously but i talk about what i think of people that come here like hitler you know or richard ramirez could be an example where they do even ted bundy for that matter you come here and you do bad things what happens when you go home if you commit suicide do you die and go to hell or right. do you die and, you know, have to face your maker? I don't really think either of those. I think that what happened was in their blueprint when they were pre- when they were pre-planning their life, because we all, in my opinion, we all pre-plan before we get here with our blueprint. I think that Hitler, I think that Ted Bundy, and I think that uh, Richard Ramirez wrote in too many traumatic events in their life, such as childhood trauma like being molested or whatever Richard Ramirez said that he witnessed someone murder um, his female cousin's husband or something at a young age so he had no respect from life he, he wrote in too much trauma in his life he couldn't handle it and instead of being able to learn and grow from it and coming out the other side which is what we're supposed to do is overcome trauma instead mm-hmm. he went the other way and went dark so what happens when you cross over do you go to hell no i don't think so i don't think there's a hell that exists i do think there's something that's called the left door and i think people like hitler like ted bundy or and but i mean hitler i doubt or i mean ted bundy and um i think ted bundy crossed over i do think ted bundy crossed over i don't think richard ramirez crossed over i think he is afraid mm-hmm. to meet his maker but i think they yeah. go back they have to rewrite out their life path and i think they have to be like okay wrote in too much trauma can't do that again but you have to go back and conclude your life again back through the left door but you have to take some bits and pieces of trauma out because i really think these people that are serial killers had some really messed up childhoods like some seriously mm-hmm. messed up childhoods um, he was born in uh, February 29th, so that was why... Okay, this is something I wanted to bring up. So he was born on technically, what is that, Leap Day? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Leap Day was February 29th? Yes. Because mm-hmm. normally there's only 28 days in February. You know who else was born on February 29th? Who? Eileen Wuornos. Really? Female serial killer from Florida. Wow. Uh huh. That's interesting. Now, if anyone's listening and your birthday's on February 29th, don't come at me, okay? Don't at me on social <laughs> media. I'm not saying you're a serial killer. But it does make you wonder 
if there's some sort of a correlation there. They weren't born on the same year, but it does make you question things, doesn't it? Because yeah. technically, their birthday only have what's what's leap year? Is it every one year, every two years, every four years? I can't I remember. I can't remember either. Yeah, I can't remember so either, they don't like that. get to celebrate their birthday every year because it doesn't exist every year. So yeah. it does make you wonder if if the times we come in and we pre-plan our lives, if it unfolds that way for a reason, does that create extra tra- trauma not having a birthday? Ooh, that's a good theory. That's a good theory. You know, I mean, you would. Well, I would feel left out as a kid, wouldn't you? Yeah, something to think about. You know, like, that's or your sure. friends making fun of you. I mean, that probably just added to the trauma of being like, when's your birthday? February 29th? Well, it doesn't exist this month. Haha. <laughs> you know, like, make, it's just right. more trauma compounding, you know? Wow. Wow. Um, like, you're worthless. You're nothing. Well, didn't he get um, cancer while he was in prison? He did. He ended up getting cancer and he died. See, so that's really interesting to me because I've seen this happen a few times Mm. where dark people, and I'm not saying everyone that gets cancer is a serial killer either, but I've seen this happen a few times in my personal life where the universe redeals karma back to you in different ways. And in my opinion, for him murdering, what, wasn't it 13 people or something that he was convicted of? They think it was more, but he admitted to 13. And then he gets cancer while he's waiting on death row and then dies? Yeah. Just yeah. saying, karma comes back at you. It won't. It doesn't have to come back at you as a serial killer, but it repays also, its debts. I find it interesting that when he was being pursued by the police um, and he went into, like, that little, like, suburb area where people were and he was so obsessed with people like calling him the night stalker and all of that and i just find the irony that he was literally attacked by the crowd Mm -hmm. that knew he was the night stalker Mm -hmm. like you're not so famous and good now are you right you know well that's the that's the ego and that's the like psyche of the mental health issue too like what i mean even if he's not like diagnosed clinically there's something wrong with like neurons not firing correctly up there and yeah. obviously, you know, to think yeah. that it's, it, I don't, once again, putting yourself in the shoes of a serial killer, how could you go in and not have remorse for the violent crimes you're doing? It just, it boggles my mind. Yeah. It boggles, oh, Nikita said uh, next leap year is 2024. Yeah, I thought it was every, like, oh. few years or something like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so, let's see, he grew up in El Paso. He died June 7th of 2013. I would love... You know what I should do at some point is look up his astrology chart for his birth date and his death date. Oh, my gosh. Do it. Do a YouTube video on that. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? Ooh, That'd that's really a good idea. Should I do that? Do it. Ooh. Do it on the other ones, too. What, like Ted we Bundy? About- Let's talk yeah. about and serial HP. killer astrology chart. That's actually... That would... I wonder if you could correlate something out of that. Make it a series. Make it like a YouTube series. You guys think I should do a series? Or Twitch. Do it. I'm all excited. I'm like, hmm. You're like astrology. It's Don't great. get me started, okay? Like, literally. <laughs> um, so reports say that he was 12 years old when his cousin, who is a Vietnam War veteran, showed him pictures of Vietnam- Vietnamese women that he had raped, tortured, and killed. So they think this was partially where his brain started thinking that it's a good idea. <laughs> mm, I still I think know. he was molested. Do you? Yeah, there was something there yeah. was something wrong mm-hmm. that was going on. And I agree. He never really, correct me if I'm wrong, but there was never really any information brought up about his childhood. Uh-uh. He kept like, his mouth shut. There was not shut. a lot of contact. It's, yeah. it's interesting because if you're researching, and it, I'm assuming it's the gender um, displacement of female versus male. Mm. Because if you mm. research, and this is just my history, I don't know how you guys feel about it that are watching. You find more information on a woman serial killer's childhood than you do on a man's serial killer childhood. And I think mm. the reason is is that women are, are are emotional beings. And, like, when they get caught, they're like, like Eileen Wernos, I was tortured and raped by my grandfather, and he abused me, and he got me pregnant. And, you know what I mean? Like, you're going to spill your guts because, like, you finally have someone to talk to about your trauma. Yeah. Where men yep. are withholding that trauma and, like putting that masculinity up, you know what I mean, of, I'm fine, 
nothing happened. Yeah. It's none of your yeah, business. Yeah, that barrier. Like, oh. it's so bad you don't even want to, like, bring it up. Like, you've buried it so depth in the back of your mind that it's not even going to, like, come out of your mouth, you know? Yeah. That's just what I've noticed with, with researching. Because even Ted Bundy didn't – I still think something was wrong with Ted Bundy, too, because – they think he kidnapped his first um, victim was when he was on a newspaper route when he was living in Tacoma, Washington. Mm-hmm. And I believe, and don't quote me on this because I don't have the facts in front of me, but I think she was somewhere between the ages of like five and eight. And Ted mm-hmm. Bundy was like 12 or 14. He knew the house. He'd been watching the house. He'd been on his paper route. They had a shoe size of a child by the window. The window was open. He went through the window, abducted the child, and walked out the front door. They found her body, like, later down by the river. So, I mean, for him to be 12 or 14, once again, reenacting this, that that was his first murder, what happened to your childhood And you're not telling anybody about? Something right. happened in your childhood. Like, I literally think that childhood trauma like chemically rewires the brain for some people where they just can't deal with life understandably because that's horrible to be molested or whatever you know like that happened the the interesting thing is he was he was raised and born in connecticut i think ted Mm -hmm. bundy Mm -hmm. just to go off topic and um i did a lookup of his um address Mm -hmm. where he was born and it's literally exactly three hours from my place Ooh, let's drive i was thinking of like doing a drive-by and just like getting (laughs) this sounds violent i'm gonna do a drive-by guys and then and then also you know put my voice recorder out the window (laughs) just drive by with the wind you just hear (laughs) the whole time an evp without being like (laughs) You know, too obvious. You know? <laughs> oh man, I don't. I think Ted Bundy crossed over. Box in the top of the car. You know. It's yeah. I mean, I don't think. I don't feel like because even doesn't. I think at the museum his glasses are there too. Don't. Yeah. I think. I, I think. I don't. I don't know. I don't really feel. I don't feel his soul honestly. Um, no. I thought I thought maybe um, in his like childhood home there might be some residual things if some things went down. Mm-hmm. You know. Oh, you mean like molesting wise? Yeah. Well, like he d- he was stuff. raised by his mom and then his stepdad, so it does make you wonder. Mm. Or like, or was his stepdad like abusing and raping his mom in front of him? Ooh. Mm-hmm. You know, for like, because uh-huh. you have to look at the situation. Like Ted Bundy liked young college women, mm-hmm. so to me, it was like he was witnessing his mom be abused, and he learned that that's how you treat women. Wow. It's a lot easier if you just go on a date, boo. You don't have to do it that way and, like, chop their head off. But that's just my opinion. That sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> but true. then again, I'm a Taurus and I'm just lazy and I'm just like, yeah, I don't have the energy for that. You know what I mean? <laughs> I love the rabbit holes we go down. We oh. talk about, like, how did, like, the similarities between them. It's so true. I think it's fascinating, just to add one more thing to Ted Bunny, mm-hmm. that he kept, like, such a, uh, like, a somewhat normal relationship with somebody. Oh, his girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, it's Liz. so yeah. bizarre to me what was going through his brain. Like, I need to know. I need he to know. He swears there were two. He says it was him and there was somebody else in there. And he he would say it's a demon. It's dark. I don't know what it is. But it, mm. it will take me over. And he didn't, like, have a name for it. He didn't know it. And, like, you can see mm. the switch in his face. You can. With some interviews where he'll be like, I'm Ted Bundy, and then all of a sudden he gets that, like, dark energy going on. And um, he'd, he would admit that. So I think, um, I mean, sometimes with bipolar you can get two two personalities going on, and they don't communicate mm. with each other, and that, that can be caused by trauma. Sometimes it can be caused by um, genetics. If it's passed sure. down, it can be. But when you yeah. go into these manic phases of bipolar, um if it's a violent manic one phase, trust me, I've studied it for a very long time. You don't remember, they don't remember going manic. They don't remember, it could be, you could be manic for a day, you could be manic for a week, you could be manic for a month. But right. then afterwards, you start to come down off the mania. And when you're manic, you do crazy things. Not Now, I am not saying every person with bipolar is a serial killer. Please do not take my words out of context. That is not where I'm going with this. Um, that there are different degrees of bipolar. And I think the ones that are more extreme, where they do black out and have these extreme manic phases, um, violent outbursts can occur. And they don't remember the violent outbursts that happen. 
And that's what Ted Bundy would say is like, oh, I don't like I know I killed her and I know that I like chopped her head off. But like, I don't remember doing any of it. And I truly do believe him when he says that. And especially like you can see in his face when that like shift happens. And it's mm-hmm. it's sad because he did, you know, really mental health didn't become a thing till recently, which is right. so crazy to me. Like how stupid. What a journey when regards to mental health. This and, and planet is ridiculous, you guys. It's messed up. It's messed up. I also think that when he switched into like his other personality or like his other person, that that was when I noticed he started talking in like third person. Ex- yes, exactly. Exactly. And, and that was the Ted. That mm-hmm. was the conniving uh-huh. whatever other personality that was trying to be sly and pull a fast Well, and people are like, oh, was he blood. possessed? I don't think so, guys. No, I, I, I don't think so, honestly. Because I've, I've witnessed manic, extreme manic bipolar episodes happen. And uh, and it's you, you wouldn't know unless you've experienced it. You wouldn't know yeah. unless you've experienced it. Like and those things. And, well, and, you know mental health it wasn't a topic of conversation because for years women were really only considered to have mental health problems and you were thrown in the asylum for having too bad of period pains yeah messed up if you want to see me go psycho put me in an asylum for my period pains like that's <laughs> when i will literally go psycho okay like imagine that though like your family would just like oh you're complaining because you have cramps and your family drops you off and you never see them again and now you're in, like, a loony bin where there's probably actually crazy people, and then you have staff that's molesting the people. I mean, what a mess. Pumped full of drugs. Actually, speaking of that, I couldn't even get through the American Horror Story Asylum. Uh, Did I watch that so one? I could only get through a few episodes of it, and it was when the electroshock therapy stuff started happening. Oh, my God. Autumn said, my grandmother had electroshock therapy for freaking depression. <sighs> Wow. It's horrible. I just, yeah, that's I, that's why, like, I, I do like to go to asylums, too. People are like, oh, my God, it's so scary. That's also why I don't like people who disrespect asylums. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. the media made a fear behind asylums, people. You know, like, I'm not saying there weren't crazy people in there that needed medication and we just weren't medically advanced enough to be able to help them yet. But there were people in there that were innocent that should have never been in there and predominantly women who were suffering from depression, period pains. And if you got in a fight with your husband and told your husband that you wanted to leave, they could put you in an asylum for it. I would have been there 20 times already. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) You would be running a roost. You would have been head nurse, right? I am the head nurse. Oh, no. No. It is. It's just, so that's why with asylums, you shouldn't look at that as like a fear-based situation. That's what, I mean, I'm just going to say it. I I had a really big problem with the Tennessee Wraith Chasers um, when they had their show on. I've, I've spoken out against them and I still feel the same. I haven't changed one bit on that, okay? Because they were going into these southern locations and asylums. Not only asylums, but they were also going into Vietnam veteran hospitals with, with like, where veterans died. And they were like, oh, we're going to get all the evil out. We're going to put it in this devil's box. And we're going to take it out. We're going to blow up the evil. And I'm like, what if, first of all, what, since when are you allowed to expunge energy and you're playing God? Mm-hmm. If a God exists, since when were you assigned that position? Second of sure. all... How do you know that you're blowing up energy? And third of all, how do you know the energy that you are blowing up if, in fact, it is working? What if that's a decent spirit? What if that's a veteran spirit? It's true. It pisses it's me true. off. Anyway. Yeah, and how do you blow up energy? Wouldn't you just create more energy if you're going to blow it up? You know? like I have a lot of... It. You know what? That was Satan's work, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what they were doing was Satan's work. Like, literally, wrong. I'm it sorry. Was it was so wrong. Well, and it wasn't even that. Like, through the series, they would go in these asylums, the Tennessee, Tennessee Wraith Chasers. I'll, I mean, I, I got some hate from some people that supported them. I don't care. I will continue to say this. First of all, I don't yeah. think you should ever go in a location and disrespect the energies in there. They live there. You don't. Second of all, asylums were for mental health patients. Since when do you have the right to go in and disrespect people that have mental illness? Just because you can't see it and it's not cancer doesn't mean it's just as bad as cancer. Even if it was depression, it can still be serious. And third, Mm. going in to disrespect 
military bases where these men served our country and put their lives on the line at the time only thing that existed was shell shock they didn't even consider it ptsd or other mental disabilities and you're going to go in there and you're going to disrespect the energies and now you're going to blow them up are you serious are you serious right now yeah so yeah i had a problem with tennessee rapes hi boo how you doing anything for the readings yeah, oh, seriously, it was all about the ratings, so, anyway, so hope their devil's so box shoves it where the sun don't shine, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. All right, going back to Ramirez, now that I had my rant, God, don't you guys like crystal rants when I just drop the mic? Sorry about that, I just, like, I feel like I get off my soapbox, <laughs> I purge so much energy, I feel so lightweight now, you know what I mean? Like. Oh my gosh. <laughs> While you were talking about it, my my laptop was glitching. Oops, sorry. Like it was going like in and out. Sorry about that. So that was my energy. <laughs> anyway, that was fine. So yeah. <laughs> Your laptop's like we can't take crystals energy from <laughs> Just like. <laughs> it's no, like I'm gonna shut down. It's gonna like combust into thin air. It's fine. <laughs> Yeah, I had I had some people I think that were from the Tennessee. I don't even know their names. I had some of them uh, message me on social media. They uh, wanted me to retract my statement. I said, "No." So they wanted to retract your opinion. Yeah, that's not how it works. Uh-huh. They wanted me to retract my statement because they were their ratings dropped after I did a review on it, and I was like, "Well, don't be disrespectful, mofo." Then it's really not that Why complicated. Why you trying to blow up ghosts? Why are you trying to blow ghosts? And I hope you get possessed and followed home, and that's all I'm gonna leave it at. You know. <laughs> um, I'm dead. Okay, so Ramirez, that's another thing, saying that again. I didn't know about what? Ramirez, he also was the youngest of five children. Where the hell are his brothers and sisters? Yeah, nothing was mentioned. I know. Nothing like, where's mentioned. his family? Were they like, oh, we don't claim him. We don't claim him. Yeah. That's what it looked like. Yeah. There's zero mention whatsoever. Nikita, that southern accent. I'm sorry. I got shit for that, too. Yeah. My, f- I got some shit for that. My father is from Oklahoma. Most of my family lives in Oklahoma in the south on my dad's side, like Louisiana, Alabama, Georgia, and they all, so my father's side is all English, Scottish, Irish, okay? And they all talk with a southern accent, like very fast and like very southern. So I know the accent, like I can recreate the accent. They hate when I do it, by the way. They get so mad. I mean, I do it to like piss them off on purpose. <laughs> So I used the accent on YouTube a couple of times and people thought I was like making fun of the South. Stop it. Get out of here. All right. My family's from down there and I talked to them that way. And like my dad laughed, you know, like he thought it was funny. Anyway. (laughs) Um, let's see. Oh, that's uh, messed up. What, what, what? The, um, according to the reports. <laughs> That's when, what I was on. How did you know that was oh, the one really? I was on? Ugh. No, it just, like, went on. Mm-hmm. Um, when Richard was 12 years old, a cousin who was, um, a Vietnam War veteran. Oh, yes. Um, sh- showed him pictures of Vietnamese women that he had allegedly, like, raped and tortured and, like, killed. Well, and then. While he was over there. His cousin had a wife, and apparently he shot his wife dead in front of him. Yeah, that's messed up. So, I mean, of course you're not going to respect the dead or a dead body when you just, like, watched it happen. And you're like, I guess maybe it's because he was a child when it happened. He's, like, what, 12 years old, somewhere around there? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As a child, I feel like you can't ha- – you don't comprehend the psyche of – you know, like, you hear on the news, oh, there was a shooting today, it happened, blah, blah, and then that's it. Right. But – but as an adult, you realize someone was shot dead. They were here one minute and they are gone the next. That person has sisters and brothers and parents and children and people that love them. It's not just a body. Like this person had like a, a life. Like this person had was an important being in the universe. Mm. And I think when you're 12 or 14, you're so immune to, like, you hear the news and it's like, oh, someone was shot dead. Well, then then you witness it in front of you. I don't know if he really grasped the fact that he was taking a life. You know what I mean? No. Like, 
No. And, and I mean, and here's my other other thing that I, and it's just a theory that I have that I like to talk about my theories. Mm-hmm. When you have these serial killers that shoot and kill people like this or rape or whatever, whatever it does that ends in death or stomps them to death like, like he did. Mm-hmm. You have this person taking life after life. He claims he's a Satanist. I don't know if I really believe that, to be honest. I know real Satanists. I don't think he was. Um, I don't think he was either. I think he's full of shit. Yeah. He might be agnostic or atheist, but I don't think he... But even if... Okay, here's the theory. Even if he's atheist or agnostic, you take, for example, the Ghost Adventures episode when they went to the Cecil Hotel, right? Mm -hmm. And then Marty and... um, What's the other guy's name? Anyway, they were there. They said, yes, Um, Richard's here. Richard's here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So clearly... And they were like, I don't think he's crossed over. Like, you can tell, like, the energy. Like, he probably was not crossed over. And you get that a lot with these serial killers. If you're agnostic or atheist or a Satanist, why are you hiding out in the gray zone, scared to return back to, like, where we're from? You know what I mean? Like, if you're this tough, badass, like, agnostic atheist or whatever, and you claim there's no, no God or whatever you claim... But yet, when you die, because you know the horrible crimes you did, you don't want to meet your maker... So instead, you're just left around floating around in a different dimension on this planet. Clearly, you do think something exists because you're afraid to see it. Right. Your whole life was a lie. Exactly. Literally, like everything you've practiced your whole life. Exactly. Because, like, I'm going to tell you the truth. Christian, and I talk about Christian in my book, and, like, honest to God, Christian was like a love of my life. You know what I mean? Mm Mm-hmm. Christian was extremely, what's the, what, what's ag- atheist agnostic where you don't believe in anything? Yeah. He, whatever, whichever one was like, he doesn't believe in anything. He, he did his whole life. Does nothing. Nothing exists. No, we don't reincarnate. Nothing exists. When he died, he did cross over. He's come to me and dreamed several times. He's like, I fucked up. Yeah, there, yeah, we've lived a lot of lives. Like, yeah, this shit's real. Like, and he crossed over. Even though, but once again, if you're agno- if you're a true agnostic or atheist, and you see the light or whatever it is when it happens, of course you're gonna go through because now you're curious. Now you want to know what's going on. Right. So it just, I'm sorry, I'm going down a rabbit hole. But anyway, you know no, what I'm, do true. you see where I'm going with this? Like, yeah, I see. If Richard's such an ass and he's such a badass and such a bully to be able to, like, overtake these people and end their lives, kind of like a pussy ass bitch for not going to the other side because, you know, like, I don't think you, you're, you know, following through with who you claim you are. You're not That's as truly scary and badass that you say you are. You were just catching people at a vulnerable time while they were asleep. Right. So. Right. That's it's just my, my two cents. Anyway. Yeah. I'm off my soapbox again. I had a few of those tonight. <laughs> it's been fun, you know? <laughs> it's been a nice release stream, you know? We're just. Maybe it's from the book. I'm going to blame out. my book. It was just a lot. You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> Jesus. And retrograde. Retrograde. Yeah, literally. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay, so he saw, yeah, so he had a screwed up life, you know, like, he's getting pictures of murders and rapes and all this stuff. Then 1984, he commits his first murder and raping and stabbing of a 79-year-old widow. Once again, you're a pussy-ass bitch, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. You, you, you went, you broke into someone's house in the middle of the night, an old woman, so he's probably watching her, she's weak. And you're going to pretend like you're this badass? Get out of here. Get out of here. You're weak. You know what and I mean? It, yeah. Yeah. No, it, it's it's just dark. It's just dark. And it goes to show you that, you know, these murders and these serial killers that just kill to kill, regardless mm-hmm. of their past life, mm-hmm. are just baseless. Yep. They literally have zero empathy whatsoever. Oh, so this like is they, new info you found. 2009, he was implicated on an April 18... I'm sorry, 1984 murder of a nine-year-old. So he hmm. did murder a child, so his DNA did match the crime scene. Yeah, but they didn't charge him with it. Wow. Yeah, so they must have not had enough evidence. Well, also, he's already them. on death row for 13 murders. I don't know how much more you need. You know what I mean? That's true. That's true. But, I mean, I guess it does bring justice to the family, but, wow. It's amazing DNA can do anymore. It's true. 
Um, he, he waited about eight months before resuming his killings, and most of the deaths were around Los Angeles, as you guys know if you watched it. And he basically would do home invasions at night, hence why he's called the Night Stalker. He'd wait till everyone is asleep. They think that he handpicked his victims. So if it was a married couple or a couple, he would murder the man in cold blood, like shoot him in the head usually. And then the other person would be like the wife, and he would torture and rape for hours. And then he'd just leave. He'd leave her. She'd, she'd be raped and bloodied and beaten, and he would just walk away and leave. You know what I just find interesting, too? is how he thought he was so calculated and he did. Like getting away with he so much. He thought he was, yeah. Yeah, that he didn't think in his head that the simplest traces he was leaving behind was a footprint. Mm-hmm. You know, and that ultimately led to him being caught. Mm-hmm. What, what would have been the chances that there would have only been two pairs of those shoes made and he was one of them that bought them? That's true. Well, that's the universe. So that was his weird. karmic cycle coming back in. The universe was Absolutely. like, oh, well, even if you kill people, we already have a plan for you, so don't worry about it. Well, and we're, so you weren't so smart then. But that's also that divine timing, and to me, that's also, like, there are no coincidences, right? Mm-hmm. Two pairs of mm-hmm. shoes that are made, Richard Ramirez buys one, and that's the shoe that's connected to him and all the crimes and murders? Yeah. There's no coincidences. Yeah. None. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God he... Thank God didn't think of that because he probably wouldn't have been caught no he wouldn't have been caught well then it, it was able yeah. to trace him to the children that he was also molesting and abducting mm-hmm. ew and did you mm-hmm. hear her say that he, apparently like he didn't shower and he smelled horrible they li- i think one someone even um said that he smelled like literally a rotting corpse the irony the irony he was literally embodying what he was doing it's disgusting just trash, trash so it, well it tells you but it's not just trash it's like trauma yeah like i'm not excusing him for what he did by all means like he should have been persecuted for what he did he's a monster but mm. if he's not showering like a normal person would be showering or like cleaning themselves and taking care of themselves like he had an apartment so it just tells you like he wasn't even taught to shower he wasn't even taught to clean himself you know what i mean like that's yeah. trauma. Like, that's trauma, man. Like, this, and not an excuse, but this dude was, like, messed up. Like, from yeah. the get-go. Like, he didn't even, he didn't have a chance. He didn't have a chance. Yeah. It's true. Um, oh, there was another one. Uh, I wanted to talk about the case. So, they had a lot of the cases. They had, like, the police that were t- discussing that were, like, on, um, the, as detectives on the case. This is mm-hmm. in the Netflix documentary. Now, one thing I found interesting was he, Richard Ramirez, broke into a couple's home. I can't remember their name. You'll have to research it. And he apparently shot the husband twice and the bullet lodged in his skull. The husband got up out of bed and went to, like, kill Ramirez because he's in his house. And he's been shot. He's bleeding everywhere and he's running. What did Richard Ramirez do? He turned around and ran out like a bitch. Yep, he ran away. Yeah, and the guy survived, by the way. But, like, hello? He wasn't as tough. Like, the the media made him look scarier and tougher than he really was. He was breaking in unlocked windows. What's the moral of the story? Lock your freaking house, man. Mm -hmm. Cats had a couple people walk in her house recently. Oh, my gosh scary like mm-hmm. like not even exaggerating i've actually had a, someone yeah cat cat has a roommate and, and just... they don't like to lock the door sometimes you know what i mean and it drives cat crazy she gets very angry and cat twice cat's been in her is... house <laughs> tell him about it why am i laughing i'm not i'm not i'm not trying to be mean but i and it's not even to be weird but you know what men just need to like you know do simple tasks once in a while you know what i'm saying it's normal lock the door can't. pick up after yourself that's all i gotta say okay that's all i gotta say very basic cat's sitting there and all of a sudden the door opens and some stranger is standing in her, your house literally just like standing in the dining room staring at you yeah and we're like hello hello no, you just gonna, it's not funny. Right, I shouldn't laugh. It's really not funny. Dinner. 
want some dinner? Get out! <laughs> Please, just oh, back. come in. Why don't you stay a while? Nice to see you. But that tells you that, like, Mona. even people, like, I mean, I don't know if he was going to do anything, but. But still. That's how easy mm. it is to just go in somebody's house when it's unlocked. It's just, it's like a candy store. Done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Life gone like that. You like know, my like aunt, Very well, my, my mom's side of the, so my dad's side of the family is like Oklahoma and the South, and my mom's side of the family is from Pennsylvania and Missouri. And yeah. my mom's side of the family, very Midwestern, it is a common theme in the Midwest to not lock your doors, not lock your windows. You live in Kansas City, Missouri, it's a little bit rural, everybody knows everybody there's subdivisions it's trustworthy it's this you know it's it's a little bit southern and when my aunt moved to colorado it was more of like a western town it still is a little western you know and uh people just break in walk through your door and i remember telling my aunt like lock your freaking door man and she'd be like oh it's, we're gonna be fine everything's fine so, like, her windows and doors were open all the time. And, like, you could literally go to her house at 2 a.m. and walk in. And she'd be in bed and her, her house was unlocked. I can't tell you how many times we'd be like, you're dumb. Like, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, it's just the generation. Mm-hmm. Just, just the generation. My, my grandparents would do the same thing. I do not. I don't even come home for, like, five minutes without locking my door, Okay. Colorado yeah, and anybody. Vegas, but like, and I live in a, like a, a gated, guarded community, and I still would not leave my unlocked, okay? Like, literally. True. Anyway, True. sorry. Tangent. <laughs> um, I love these streams. They're so fun. Okay, so th this is interesting, too, that I saw in the notes. When the Night Stalker okay. stuff was happening, there was a panic surge with gun sales in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. What gets a gun when your window is open and you're asleep? You gonna sleep with okay, it between in your pants? Like what? What are you gonna do? And then shoot your willy that's off? A valid point. It that's is. A valid point. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. I feel like it's a lot cheaper just to lock your windows. But do what you want. <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But I did find that interesting. That is interesting. Oh. All right. Eventually, a fingerprint was discovered that led Ramirez's identification. So they were still doing fingerprints. So once again, sloppy work, right? Mm -hmm. um, and his name was released to the public. Now, the last thing I want to touch base on was um, they went. So they think Richard, well, they know he did. He got in his car, drove to the Bay. Was it San Diego or San Francisco? It was one of them. I think it was San Francisco. It was San Fran. Okay. I just, yeah. I couldn't remember because I know that's a little bit further north. He committed yeah. a crime there. Was it the mayor or the governor or something that was in the, of the city? It was the mayor. And she she's like, oh, we're going to catch him. And she has this public release. And she basically tells the public who they're looking for, releases, like, the identity of the shoe, and basically, like, gives it away. And Richard's probably watching TV and realizes he's in trouble. How dumb. Yeah, that was not, I was not happy when I uh, read that. Yeah, so anyway, should we move on to Lubricalia? Let's do it. I'm sorry, I'm trying to block someone, but it's oh. fine. All right. Lubricalia notes. <laughs> I was, I was watching that. I was waiting for somebody to, I was Pop waiting, in. I was Pop waiting in. for some word vomit and I was like, don't, don't do it here. <laughs> oh, with Lubricalia? No, no, this person you blocked. I was waiting oh. for it. Um, um, well, I mean, they kind of did. <laughs> oh, they did? So I missed it. They kind of did. It's okay. Look, it's safe. All right. Well, Thank it's gone. you, Erica. Appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. I don't know. What, you know, yeah. I just, I don't want to do Lubricalia. I just want to talk about this, this, the series, the After Death series. I just need to get to it. All right. Let's do it. Let's just get, let's just do it. I just need to, I just need to talk about it. Luper Carly can get dark, so we're we're just gonna talk about <laughs> surviving death. <laughs> okay, there's a docu series. It is a six part docu series, and it's called Surviving Death. It's on Netflix. Mm -hmm. The first episode I think is amazing. It's talking about people that have died, like literally been dead for an hour or more, and then came back from the dead. Okay, 
then you go to uh, which i just find very compelling you guys would really there's a girl that talks about she literally drowned her bones were broken she was like held underwater from this like waterfall thing and she came back to life she talks about her her like crossing over like coming back experience amazing really yeah, good beautiful. honestly it was really beautiful. good it was but then you get to the second episode and you're kind of like what happened it's starting to go so now and that. let me get there okay. not all of them are bad just a couple episodes okay so the first episode they're essentially talking about is it norway is that where it's taking place at yes okay there's a psychic retreat in norway where you can go anyone from all over the world can go you pay a lot of money i'm assuming and you're gonna learn how to be a physical medium at this psychic retreat i think it's like a week or two process whatever um, what it really seems to me like they interviewed some people that were going like basically you're learning how to become intuitive and how to like um, trigger your psychic abilities okay and like you're trying to learn how to like trust your gut instincts how to become a medium essentially uh-huh and mm -hmm. you're kind of like okay I don't know if I'm buying this but okay because I bet these people are making some bank off of it like I'm not a scam <laughs> artist but if I was a scam artist I'd be doing this you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> and what it really and they were interviewing people that were paying money to go to this place but <laughs> did erica put the protective eye up there i'm dead i can't breathe <laughs> ah, i can't breathe that was so good oh i'm so it. sorry okay thank you for that <laughs> um, thank you so the second episode they're talking about doing seances and that seances are one way for people who are not familiar with their mediumship to feel the energy of a room, feel what paranormal activity feels like. And um, basically, like, you're sitting in a seance, it's completely dark, pitch black room, and you need to, like, talk about what you're feeling while you're in this, like, paranormal interactive environment. Is that a good way to explain it? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So Which I'm through different like levels, right? Which yeah. I'm like, cool seance. Like we know what seance is. Cat and I've done seance. Like cool seance, awesome. You know, I like seances. Chill. Mm -hmm. And then it it kind of gets a little dark all of a sudden, and <laughs> it gets dark because they start explaining how they're gonna do these seances. So there's always one main psychic medium that it, or physical. They call her a physical medium um, that is running the seance. Okay. So essentially, she is going to be the head of the seance. She's going to sit in a chair like this one I'm sitting in, right? It's like a, a tall black back like, chair. Yep, there's chairs, there's armrests. And in order for her to channel the spirits, they are going to Velcro strap her arms and feet to the chair. And their main purpose for doing this is they don't want anyone to think she is walking around like they want the mediums to understand that they're training their psychic abilities and it's paranormal activity that they're hearing i don't think that's the main reason that they're doing it but anyways um, we'll get to yeah. that in a second so i'm sitting there and i'm like so the the second episode they don't show this unfolding they're just kind of talking about how she gets strapped into the chair and i'm kind of like huh this looks like the exorcist unfolding here like you're strapping her to the chair like this is what you do in a possession like a severely infested pos possession yeah and i'm and like a red light glowing i'm confused i'm really confused yeah. so the the second episode essentially wraps up with not showing what happens that's in the third episode we'll get to that in a second the last thing they say in the second episode is <clears throat> She is going to invite spirits into her body and essentially allow herself to become possessed. And when that happens, there's going to be ectoplasm that occurs. And the ectoplasm is coming from entities that they have summoned in with the seance. And now she's going to allow the ectoplasm to enter her body through her orifices. But the problem is, is that sometimes the ectoplasm comes out of her orifices. And essentially, she was saying she shats herself. 
She was like, I'm not gonna explain where. We know where. Where? We oh, know no. where. I know Just where like, your orifices are. I'm dead. It's I not a like, secret. I took biology. <laughs> I did find it interesting about the ectoplasm as like weird as she was describing it and like it was just weird. I feel like it could have been worded differently than the way that she did. Um, you think, but I found Kat? Really, what? You think? Yeah. I mean, that took me by surprise. It was pretty professional up until she told me she had ex exoplasm coming out her orifice. It was. It was. I had I to rewind she, it and make sure I, I heard it correctly. Yeah, I couldn't tell if she was just trying to, like, be playful with them because you could tell that they were, like, a little nervous. I think she was serious. But, it was weird like it, she seemed really serious and i thought it was really interesting though when they showed like the photo before um, they strap like, her in the chair do they at least let her wear like a depends <laughs> can you imagine being <laughs> strapped to the chair and you shat yourself and you can't move oh that's gosh. worse that's even worse oh why gosh. strap her in let her run to the toilet i mean do something Put a porta potty in there. I don't know. Strap her to a toilet. That would be the easy way, wouldn't it? I'm dead. Imagine being in the room with someone who's sitting in their own poo and the smell coming through there. Are you serious? No. no. That's not no, my I'm kind of set. seance. Locked in a dark room. <laughs> with a red light? That's the demon. That's the demon. True. True. Anyway. It was rough. So if you can get through the second episode, good luck. Third episode was watching it. I didn't see any orifices coming loose. But. There was Timmy, though. <laughs> Stop, cat! Stop! Oh, my God. I'm a real boy. I can't. Okay. Not the gumdrop ah! I can't. Okay. I'm crying right now. Like, it's so bad. You guys have to watch it. I had to go there, okay? To oh. needs to be known. <sighs> okay, Timmy so... Timmy was the spotlight, even of the ectoplasm, okay? <laughs> okay. He was more important. Third episode. What's the series called again? Surviving... Surviving Death. Surviving Death on Netflix. Okay, third episode. They're gonna... They're gonna do the seance. Now, one thing that they did say that I did take away from this episode was when they have a seance, they play happy music and they sing. And they say that that builds up the energy in the room and it creates energy and, and it allows entities to manifest easier. That's genius. I'm going to start using that method. I think it's amazing. So I did take that away. Now, they didn't allow cameras in the room when the first ectoplasm took place. I can't. I just can't. It's so bad. They strap her. So you can hear her being strapped to the chair. Her legs and her arms are strapped to the chair. And... Um, like, they're singing and, like, all this stuff. And then which one came through first, the British voice? Yes. Yep. So they're singing. Yep. Like, there's no, there's only audio. They say, like, oh, we don't allow cameras in there because it can, like, mess up the EMFs. I'm like, whatever. You just don't want to hear, like, Timmy fart. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so bad. So, <laughs> it's so bad. I can't even, I, like, I cannot get I, I straight. Think, like, literally. Just to, like, touch on it quickly. <laughs> I think what got me the most was everyone was so excited. I'm crying. Like, like Timmy was where it was at. Okay, like okay. I was a part of the Stop team. it! Right, like, you're me cry. Like literally, <laughs> it was so funny. Holy shit! Okay, so first this British voice comes out. Like, okay, I don't know how real it was, guys. I don't know. This it's this woman who's from Norway. She shouldn't have a British voice. You know what I mean? It was this like slow, deep British voice of this woman that comes out. And she's oh, like, I am. God. I am the spirit god. Guide. I will be your guide oh, for today. <laughs> and then she like she's talking for a minute, and you're kind of like, it, like this is a shit show. Like what's going on here? And then all of a sudden, Do you get it? Do you get it? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a shit show. Anyway, who? Sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's it's so bad. But, okay. Uh, so then all of a sudden, this British voice is like, I'm going to let Timmy take. Wait, was it Timmy or Tommy? Yeah, it was Timmy. It's Timmy? It was Timmy. She's like, Timmy. I'm going to yes. let Timmy take over from here. And Timmy's going to come in. And all of a sudden, <laughs> Timmy sounds like the gingerbread man from Shrek. Hello. Hi, How's boss. How's it everybody? My name's Timmy. Hi, you? <laughs> and you're just like. I'm a real boy. <laughs> 
I'm gonna be your guy today. I was really, <laughs> I was taken back. Okay, I just wasn't expecting Timmy's voice. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that was a little weird. I mean, anyway, I was expecting some like creepy ghost kid voice. You know, like whispery. And this, this was like, no, this is the gingerbread man. <laughs> uh, he is here and incarnate. It's great. Good uh, time. Oh, um, Erica just said she um, just ordered my book. Thank you, girl. I'm so excited for you to read it. Yes! Um, please leave me reviews. Please, I need your reviews. Um, anyway. Can we stand, Timmy? <laughs> I don't know if you guys are going to be able to get through um, the second and third episode. Now, if you can get past the second and third episode, the fourth episode is really good, the fifth episode is really good, and so is the sixth episode. So, and it, it, by the way, it has nothing to do with the way it was filmed. Like, ne it wasn't like Netflix filmed it poorly. Like, it's filmed beautifully. It's just this retreat. Like, they did do an interview with the woman who was Timmy. <laughs> and yeah. she, they were like, what do you think if people say you're, like, a fraud? And she was like, well, it hurts my feelings, but I've come to, you know, the understanding that some people just aren't going to believe that this is real. And I'm like... I don't know if it's real or not. Uh, here's one side of it is those voices were really bad. If she's trying to do a voice acting thing, the voices were horrible. Now on the other side, if you're strapping these people to a chair, in my opinion, I think there is possession that's happening. And I think yeah, that they're dark. I think that they're doing it because they don't know who's going to come through. Don't you agree? Yeah. Yeah. And, and even when they were talking about it initially, she was saying that it takes, like, 10 to 15 years to master it. And, like, to master being possessed? Yeah, basically, yeah. Well, so That's what's your opinion? Weird. Do you think they should be teaching people how to be possessed? Yeah, I don't know. There's just something about being in a dark room with someone else strapped to a chair that just kind of screams, like, you know, bad news. Bad news bears. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe, that, maybe that's just me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, so freaky. <sighs> Bring Timmy back. I want to be in that room with Timmy. All right. That, that's it. Can you imagine okay. us being in there if that happened? We would just, like, bust out laughing. How did those people keep such a straight face the whole time? I have no idea, but they were excited. They were like, Timmy! It's Timmy! And it's like, what is happening right now? What is happening? I need some milk with my cookie. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, my God, cat. Oh, my God. I just can't. Nikita's out. <laughs> Timmy should get his own show. I don't know, man. It's just a mess. Timmy should get his own show. <laughs> Stop. You guys are horrible. Timmy on the channel, Crystal. No. I, I wanted, to, like, after 10 <laughs> seconds of that voice, I wanted to slap her in the throat. You know what I mean? I was like, Stop it. <laughs> Stop. It's Come so up with bad. a better voice. Like, <laughs> Ugh. Okay. Well, that's the tea. That's all I've got. <laughs> It was really bad. The, the second and third episode. The rest of it's really good. The rest of it, there was um, one other thing I wanted to touch on. I know Kat hasn't gotten to it yet, but there's a doctor that works in a hospice, and he's worked with hospices, like um, traveling hospices for a long time, literally like 16 or 20 years. He basically started taking data of hospice patients that were dying, and six months before they were preparing to cross over and they were in hospice, the six month mark, they start seeing their family that's already crossed over. So, and I'm not talking about a dream. I'm talking like full fledged. They'll be sitting in the living room and their mother that died 30 years ago walks in the room. And he said, this is the process where they start the transition of crossing over to the other side, which you guys have heard. A lot of people talk about this all the time where um, someone will get ready to die and they'll say, oh, I saw my wife who's, you know, crossed over on the other side and she says she's waiting for me. So I just think this is, an, uh, if he has data like this, it's amazing. But I think it's a, a really beautiful way to like transition us back into the other side so that we do feel safe and prepared and ready to go to the light or go home, whatever that is. So I did find that really fascinating. So the other episodes are really good. They also have a lot of parapsychologists on there that you guys will find fascinating. Just if you can't get... Now everybody's going to go watch the third episode just for Timmy. Like, literally. They're going to skip every... Like, like, I just need to see it. Timmy. Like, <laughs> I video told... Video Timmy and tag Crystal and I. Okay? Just do it. I could listen to Timmy content all day. Right? <laughs> Timmy content. Stop, Kat. You're so bad. What? Oh it's just, it's just Shrek. 
you know? I talked to Kat this morning and I was like, did you watch Timmy yet? And she's like, who's Timmy? I was like, you just need to go watch Timmy. And so she calls me and she's like, I'm dying of hysterical laughter right now. <laughs> so bad. When I heard it, I thought it was a joke. No, it's not. I felt like a commercial popped on or something. And I was just, it was just so out of left field, you know. It was Long like live Timmy. And <laughs> mystical. And then I was like, hello. And I was like, what? <laughs> Like, You're waiting for this like ancient oracle to walk in, like your guides, and it's like this for, deep like, this voice, and also it's like, like "Hey guys, how are you doing? It's me, Timmy." And you're like, <laughs> "Hi, Timmy." Um, that's the tea. That's all I've got. Yeah, that was this, good. This was good. This was fun. It was a good stream. It was good. Yeah. Uh, following up next week, what am I doing next week with Elfie? We're doing something next week. My brain still hasn't come back yet. Um, I don't um, know. I'll announce it this week. I think it's, uh, Skinwalkers something. and Native Lore, I think is what we're doing. Yes! Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll be good, because mm -hmm. I have some really good, uh, Native books full of good stories. What is stories. next? Next week is... Oh. So it's, it's like the Friday before Valentine's Day. Is it? Maybe you can talk about Lupert Carroll, Kaylee, then. Yeah, we can. I don't know. Timmy's more interesting. You know what I'm saying? Like. Oh god! Oh Timmy! Nothing matches with the Timmy. Timmy! Like so, when I was watching no, it, like I grew up in Colorado, so I know South Park really well. You know what I mean? Because it's like South Park <laughs> is a real place in Colorado, and so growing up there, it's like, oh, bro, did you see the new South Park episode? Yeah. So <laughs> the whole time I'm sitting there, I'm like, Timmy! 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 Like, that would have been a better voice than, like, the gingerbread man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hello! Oh, Nikita, Timmy to join GGD. I don't think I can do that. You know what I mean? Like, oh, come on, Crystal. You know you want him on. I'm telling you, if Timmy shows up, I'm going to I'm gonna chop him in the throat. I'm serious. Like, can't. Can you imagine it just being, like, pitch, pitch black in your room, sleeping, and you hear, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, Timmy disappears out of nowhere. <laughs> Stop. Now I'm going to get, like, Timmy, like, uh, residual activity in here. It's not going to be entering my orifice. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no orifices today, Timmy. No orifices, Timmy. Aside. Stay away from my orifice, Step boo. Aside. Okay? My orifice is none of your business. Oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh. All right. <laughs> um, please no make sure you guys check out my book if you haven't. Um, I'm really, really overly joyed and so excited to share my journey with you um it's paranormal and more and um things that i've encountered in my life on ups and downs and roller coasters search um amazon ghost girl diaries cat ordered a copy she's so excited about it i can't wait i just so want to hold it i just want to hold it i just want to hold i just want no that's <laughs> disrespectful okay after all the work i put into that Tim book Timmy's cute, though. Timmy needs some Jesus and a voice change is what Timmy needs. I mean, he does need a new voice box, okay? Woo! He needs a new voice box. Oh, my God. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much <laughs> for tuning in with Kat and I. You always know these streams are the best with us. This one will also be <laughs> uploaded for um, a podcast. It should be up tonight or tomorrow. And it will also be uploaded to YouTube. And, uh, yeah, that's all we got. Super fun tonight. Signing off with Had Timmy. Thank you, Timmy. Shout out to your voice. Thank you for being a part of the stream. Make sure you check out um, yeah. the Richard Ramirez series on Netflix as well as uh, Surviving Death on Netflix. Timmy is episode three. And <laughs> as always, uh, we will catch you guys next time. Follow us on social media. Bye, guys.